this all arose out of uh, joining UEFA and lately FIFA as well. Uh, basically, they've got a, a certain standards, we've got our own standards that we want to reach and we want to make football safe for everyone involved. And fees have been introduced to charge football clubs for the overtime used to police these matches. What kind of clubs will be affected by this? We've come to an agreement with, uh, with the Football Association and, and, and the various clubs that played European football uh, that they pay for police services. It's the same all over, all over Europe, wherever you go. Football matches are it, it's an increased cost to the to the to the police uh, in this case. Uh, so we've, we've reached a part of agreement where they pay for part of the costs or, or some of the costs involved in that. And what clubs will be affected by this? Right, the memorandum of understanding encompasses football throughout Gibraltar. It's not solely for international matches. It also includes local matches of any degree. Uh, basically. One of the things that we do there is we risk assess and categorise matches and give it different levels of category depending on, on the fans involved, the history between the clubs, etc. So for example, you get a local match between two local sites where there's been no history, uh, so there's no need for police involvement uh, and the stewards and the GFA themselves will police it in, in that respect. Whereas when we had Celtic over, that it was a very different risk assessment. So that needed a level of policing and a level of enforcement that was very different. So it goes all the way from that sort of approach, the, at the very low scale, to a Celtic or, or equivalent. And how has the news of the fees gone down with the clubs? We, we have had no issues whatsoever. They've been very cooperative in, in that respect, very understanding. It, it's the reality of the situation. Uh, no issues at all with that. And what are the main challenges the RGP face at these matches? Again, it depends on the risk assessment. Uh, and we go back to the Celtic match, which is the most prominent one because of the numbers of travelling supporters. Uh, we have to cope with a certain degree of numbers. Our resources are, are finite. We don't have a, a hundreds of police officers to deal with it. So we couldn't have... It'd be very difficult for us to, to, to host a game where we have four or 5,000 away fans, uh, as people might think. Uh, we've got to restrict that side of it. We've got to be able to manage it. Uh, it's got to be something that we are able to cope with. Uh, Celtic was a case in point. We limited the number of travelling fans to something like 800 or something like that uh, because we felt it wasn't safe for the rest of us, for ourselves and for the rest of the community to host any larger amount than that. Uh, that's the main challenge. Uh, again, when we play international teams, whether it's a national side or club sides, uh, we have very good cooperation with the uh, police forces, with uh, football policing units in other countries, uh, which will tell us about the history of, of each club. For example, Celtic Police Scotland assisting us in intelligence in regards to Celtic, uh, troublesome uh, supporters, whether they travel or not, what they get up to. It will be the same with uh, Slovan Bratislava, who played here last year as well. We got intelligence from them as to what to expect, and that is something that happens behind the scenes all the time. And of course, it's not just the match itself. People will be out and about at bars, etc. So you'll have this to contend with as well. Absolutely. Uh, and again, it very much depends on, on who the visitors are. Uh, we're talking about international matches in this case. Again, Celtic, another case in point, big drinkers traditionally, and they did. Uh, so we had to have an extra presence throughout the day in the different uh, areas where we've got bars and, and restaurants and the likes. Uh, that's an extra, that's an added uh, challenge for us. Uh, one that we can cope with. And that was going to be my next question. In terms of manpower, how does the force cope with the extra work? Well, it, it depends. Uh, it depends on the numbers again, and that is why I mentioned before that there is a, a sort of top number of, of visiting fans that we could probably accommodate with, with, with safety. Uh, again, because as we mentioned before, there's a finite number of human resources at our disposal, so we need to be comfortable uh, and happy that we can police uh, whatever numbers there are. And is this just going to be for football matches or are you hoping to expand to other events in future? Absolutely. The organising of events in Gibraltar, we're looking at making it much more formal and cost effective to the public. The police is funded by the public and, and for example, the music festival. We, like, we would like to reach a similar agreement for the policing of that particular event. It's become huge. We get 12, 14,000 people in there. And similar events throughout the year in Gibraltar that provide challenges to us. Uh, event planning and event safety has to, has to improve, we want to raise the bar in that respect and we're working behind the scenes to do so.